Hey guys, January 31st, 2018. We are sitting here by our little fireplace and outside watching a full moon come up over the valley right now. Roasting some marshmallows. Little doggies, don't do it. No. Hey, get over here now. Come on. Hi, Mariah. You get back here. Maya. Come here, Mariah. So we have all of our dogs out here with us. Good girl, Mariah. And uh, we're just going to enjoy a little bit of time here with each other. And thought, if you're interested in watching this, you get to join in with us. Hey, hey, hey. No. <laughs> Don't eat. Don't eat my marshmallows. Doggies. No. So the first month of the year has gone by with the full moon starting it and the full moon ending it. It's a blue moon, won't be a full moon in the month of February. And plus there was a lunar eclipse this morning. Good moon energy, but we're moving forward on our projects. And the build is getting moved right along, thanks to Ed's help. We really need the space because my mom's going to move in with us. She's already here. She's living with a friend. Just temporarily until we get the space up. And then we're sitting here in the middle of our roundhouse, which will be the next project, but that won't be for until next fall or maybe next year same time or something. Maybe we can build a light straw clay building underneath the solar panels for all of our equipment and the batteries and give that a try. Get that built this in this beginning of summer probably when we get a dry spell. Do a trial run on the light straw clay or yeah. like light straw light clay. straw clay project I'd like to have a more sturdy environment for the uh, batteries water system and all that stuff washer and dryer yep yeah but I'm really pleased that we also have new chickens ordered um, I need to find a tom turkey my whole goal is to be able to yeah, what are what are our goals for this year? Well, that'd be good. That'd my be goal, good to go over. my goal for the animals, is to have the ability to raise my own animals and not have to buy, rebuy and rebuy and rebuy. So we ordered ten silver Dorking hens and two roosters. Now these are mainly going to be meat birds and producers because we're really into the Welsh harlequin eggs. Oh, they're so yummy. And so our four girls are laying all eggs now, all of them are. Today, Yep. today was the first day all four girls were laying one egg a day. Yep. So pretty cool milestone starting out the year. Yep. And so I also want to do water buffalo for milk and for meat. And then I also want to, and the reason I want to do water buffalo, disease resistant, um, really good meat for you, kind of like the American bison buffalo, uh, lower in fat, and they are able to eat things that the cows, normal cows cannot eat, so they can eat more foliage and I want to rotational graze them and probably not this year but next year I'd like to get some alpacas but this year I would like to round this out with at least two water buffalo and um, 
I also have on my wish list to go see Carroll Farm down in Georgia. They well, going back to the water buffalo, they're also uh, A2A2, so they're much easier to digest for humans. The milk. The milk and everything, yeah. Plus their milk is 8% butter fat. Instead of around... 4% for, for jerseys for jerseys. and 2% for Holsteins. Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference for us and that's where mozzarella cheese comes from. So and our uh, our milk that we're getting right now comes from Ed and his family because they have Jersey cows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and for some of you guys that are watching this and wondering, you know, how do we get our milk? How do we, you know, a lot of people ask, where do you get your money to do all this stuff? Trade, barter. Well, um, I sold my house and the proceeds of that bought the land and the solar and the trailer and got us off the ground and that's why it's kind of a slow start that's why we're still in a trailer after a year and a half um, and we're doing the addition with cash when we get it um, plus we got a lot donated to us John's real good at finding donations I found the windows on Craigslist for free, just different things like that. My brother helped us, uh, my brother Ron, um, helped us get the, uh, the Ford F-250 and um, uh, flew me down to Dallas. Uh, I, I do owe him uh, and have to repay him for um, a piece of that. He actually kind of uh, donated about $1,100 towards the gifted vehicle, to us, gifted yeah. that to us. That was very nice of them, Ron and Carol. And uh, the BMW, the little 525i, um, that was gifted to me from Cole, Kelly's youngest son, my stepson. And uh, so got that up and running. And uh, what else? All the, the tractors, the bulldo, you know, the backhoe and things like that. We bought That's the tractor. We bought our old um, N8. 8N. 8N. We have a Ford 8N. We bought got, that. Got a little bit of work to do to it. It needs a new... Um, gas tank and a radiator and then uh, I've got the kit to rebuild the starter which was like twenty dollars but I just have to take the time to rebuild it and get that going because we're gonna need to be bush hogging some of the, the grass and stuff here pretty soon but John Hi. does computer work he does Google photography for um, Street View and builds websites my skill set is I can do upholstery. I used to do restaurant booth repair, and if I need to, I can kick that back in. Choose not, but if I need to, vinyl's not that healthy for you to be working in vinyl. <clears throat> and our other goal this year is health, and so we're going to go on. I believe we've been checking into things. I'm going to combine um, the Gundry diet with another diet, and we'll document that and see if we feel better. Um, get rid of inflammation, joint what was, pain. What was Gundry's first name? Steve. Steve, Dr. Steve Gundry. Yep. So, health. Um, I can't wait to get our build done, though, and have a deck out in front where we can just walk out and sit. I can't wait to have my home theater screen back up and running. I've got a... Uh, it's a 120 inch diagonal, it's a 108 inch horizontal um, screen, 16 by 9, and I've got, I used to work in the uh, AV industry, audio video stuff, and uh, got a real good deal on a $5,000 uh, projector, it's a um, sharp DLP, DLP2 chip, dark chip, pretty awesome, so um, never have to leave really to go to the movies, because I get the movies at the house better than uh, actually in town. <laughs> so, and then we'll have all our friends over in the new addition. The addition will become eventually um, a theater room, guest entertainment house. room, guest house, slash maybe my office. Um, and from those times where Kelly needs her space or I do, we'll go to our corners. <laughs> yeah, because we so. don't have any space now. Nope. My space is about 12 feet in one direction and hers is about in her chair because that's the only chair we've got right now. Now, all of our other stuff is in storage, just waiting for us to get it out of there. We also have to get our stuff out of our French storage by May first. May first, so we got to get this done, get our stuff out of there. Well, I'm going to recover our sofa and chairs and that kind of stuff. So, 
And this, this we've decided to enjoy all the things we're not going to be able to eat ever again because it's not going to be just a diet, it's a lifestyle change so that we grow healthier, healthier each year that passes. <sighs> so this you know, is our enjoyment. And one of the things Kelly and I used to do, we used to drive for hours away from the city in Tulsa to look at the stars and now all I have to do is look up. So cool. Mmm. Oh, that's yummy marshmallow. Nom nom nom. Nom nom nom. Mmm. Mmm 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 mmm. Not sure how they make a marshmallow. I'm sure it's probably not good for you. That's why sure we're is. enjoying them now and we're not sure gonna have yummy. anymore. But on our deck, I'm going to put my porch swing, these chairs. We're going to build a little half circle deck around the hickory tree out here so we can go sit out there too. But mm -hmm. I'm glad to see more of a permanent structure going up and get rid of the metal everywhere. We're also going to build this spring a new chicken coop or duck and goose coop or whatever you want to call it on the west side of the property. We'll seal it up from the woods, but we're going to kind of put it next to the woods so that they can have some shade and some cool. Then I'll be closer to the house. Also, the um, the addition is uh, we're going to be building with uh, two by sixes and um, we got a deal at the sawmill for a number of pieces there then we bought a number of pieces from Lowe's to go with that and uh, we'll be framing everything out um, two by six walls and that way we have more insulation in there we'll have our floors insulated for ceiling and everything the normal stuff but um, just trying to super insulate this as much as we can uh, without Put a wood burning stove in it, but without having to use foam um, and just the. Well, we're going to use the blue jean or the cotton insulation too and not the fiberglass. Yeah, just try to keep any of the VOCs, the volatile organic compounds, and things like that away from us as much as possible. You know, as much as you can get out, get out of using any, you know, opt out of that, that uh, nasty stuff. But yeah, it takes a while. We've been out here a year and a half. I didn't think we were going to be out in a trailer this long. Um, and my joke with Kelly is, uh, I didn't know I was going to be camping forever. Uh, but I thought we would be in our house and everything much sooner. And, uh, the plans on all this stuff, you know, keep changing. As a matter of fact, we uh, changed the location of the fireplace so that we can enjoy the view to our south as well. Well, I think it's real important to live somewhere at least a year, if not longer, so you know the four seasons, you know what's going on, you know the different things that you want to do with it. I don't think you can <coughs> pick a place and not have regrets if you build sooner than that. So unlike John, I knew we were going to be here for at least this long. Um, I didn't think I'd be building a temporary addition. Well, not temporary, just a temporary living quarters for us. It'll be permanent as far as guest quarters. It's pretty much a tiny house, but it's more like a guest quarters and office and entertaining room instead of having a kitchen and everything in there. So that'll be in our regular house. So um, part of this thing, you know, helping Ed and stuff do a website for, you know, his new business that he's getting started because he quit this job that he just couldn't stand working at anymore and uh, so anyway we're doing some trade out on that and uh, they have access to a sawmill and uh, so we'll be, this this, uh, this next year we'll be cutting down our timbers and things like that and getting everything prepped for next year um, for the roundhouse which is going to be our really cozy uh, uh, cozy home and because it's going to have you know stucco and things like that it's just going to feel really good so, it's 
going to be the nurturing house. The nurturing house. Well, I'll make this one as nurturing as I can make it. Mm -hmm. Our addition <laughs> for friends and family later on who come for visits. But honey, I think we've done really good so far this year. Getting it, first off, we made it through the winter, and this was pretty cold. I'm glad you got us the heater. That made all the difference in the world this year. Um, it made life tolerable. That one day when the floor was below, or right around 40 degrees, wasn't fun. But <coughs> fixing the... Nope. Stay. Nope. Fix, fixing the... Uh, skirting helped solve that problem. But... Well, that helped. It and what we're doing help. with the limited resources that we have, I think is pretty amazing. I think by the time we're done with this and people see how cozy it is, they'll be amazed at what we were able to accomplish too. I'm I mean, like, of us. I mean, like right now, I mean, we just spent, uh, we just spent some money on some materials and things like that. So, uh, we don't have a, a ton of money to last us till the next round, but you know, people call up and I'll have a little computer service job here or I'll have some, uh, you know, some photographs here for a little bit. So when, when you don't have a lot of debt, I mean, really the only, um, on, ongoing expenses we've got are cell phones internet. Me, and internet. Um, and then if you factor propane, you know, once a summer for about 300 bucks or so, 350. So there's really no bills, and that means you don't, we don't have to. Gasoline and food. You know, gasoline and food, so you're not having to, you know, on a Sunday evening feel queasy because I've got to go to the work that next day and deal with people that I don't like or a boss that's just an, well, and we've bought not some, nice. You know, we've, we've bought our, some of our clothes off of eBay. We've bought some of our clothes off of, out of Goodwill. We don't get the newest, <sighs> although I did just get some new muck boots. Yeah, well, they were on sale twenty percent off. Because my foot would finally fit in there. Yeah. So chore boots. I mean, we spend money where we have to, and then we do the best we can on everything else. And but I, I really like Skechers shoes, um, and uh, you know, I don't want to spend seventy or eighty bucks for them. So I, the last two set of uh, Skechers I got for, uh, I think it was probably like seven to ten dollars, plus shipping. So maybe fifteen dollars for a pair of Skechers. And uh, they were, when they came in, they almost looked like they weren't even used uh, or even worn. So, um, so that that's my new shoes for this year. Oh, uh, but I did get you a pair of Crocs for slippers. You did, you did. And she did because my last pair of slippers we got were I don't know they were Walmart ones from I don't know three years ago. And they were and nasty. They uh, about the time, hush guys, about the time. She uh, had ordered me the Crocs. I was complaining that my old ones, every time I come outside, they would literally disintegrate. Literally, they were falling apart. The, 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 the plastic part of the bottom was just, it looked like leprosy shoes. <laughs> well, now falling. you have lined Crocs to wear, mm -hmm. and you can even step outside if you need to. Yep. And they also keep your feet warmer than... Uh, regular slippers yep oh and then she got me over Christmas there was a really good sale no uh, yeah Black Friday really good sale over at um, Orschlands and they had something like if you became a preferred customer or something like that and you spent a hundred dollars you got like twenty dollars off so we became got two preferred customer things and a Black Friday so I got these insulated um, bib overalls bib overalls by burn. and jacket by burn yep and we got her a whole set, me a whole set, and some stuff for the kids, and for like two hundred dollars. And on the day that it was forty degrees on the floor, we were both wearing mm -hmm. our insulated overalls and our burn jackets in the house. And it was great. Felt like I was in an Arctic expedition <laughs> <laughs> inside. Kim trails all over the sky. Yeah. Every cloud in our sky right now 
is a chemtrail cloud. None of them are natural. A perfectly blue sky this morning when I got up and there was probably 15 or 20 super saturated chemtrails everywhere with three or four planes flying in different directions. Crazy stuff. And they're still going. Yep, still going. But I'll be able to grow more of the food for the animals and the geese. I'll get my <clears throat> three more hugel beds going. And then can some this year. And our good friends have a freeze dryer. So we'll freeze dry some of our food, oh, which yeah. will be cool. We got to get our blueberries planted and get some more blueberry plants. We need to get the apple trees, apple tree. I got to get one more apple tree for the pollinator. I have two peach trees that need to be planted and we're going to put up um, some evergreens to block the view across the street. So we got some planting to do this year. We've got, um, I'm going to make it a food forest on the north side of the trailer, back that way, and then keep the garden. We're keeping everything pretty close. We're doing um, our bed, our gardening, oh, right garden back. close to our house. Where are the lights going? And... We'll keep the food forest close to the house, keep the water source close, um, so we don't have to wander too far to be able to take care of everything. So if either one of us get harmed, hurt in any way, we can still go about our business. Uh, that was recommended by another one of our good friends. Uh, Highly recommended that. He's hurt his back and he wishes everything was closer to him. So I'm heating his morning and I'm going to do it, especially after breaking my ankle and not being able to put any. Hold on. Hey, get back here. Uh -uh, come back here. I broke my ankle though in October 5th. And it was a non weight bearing break. surgery, a plate and pins, and I know all too well what it's like not to be able to walk. So... All right, hush. I'm just really proud of us for getting, moving forward, moving hush. ahead. I know a lot of our friends have thought we're crazy and that it's been pretty slow, but hey, we own everything. We don't owe anything, and... I'm okay with slow. If uh, slow and debt free and not having to go anywhere or be anywhere at any specific time is okay. Plus I really I mean, like to spend time with John. And so being able to spend time with John, I mean there's been a couple times he's gone out and looked for jobs or put out applications or resumes or whatever. Uh, but I would rather do without some than to put the wear and tear on us and on our car and on everything else to get into town 30 minutes away. Now I did work for UPS for the holiday season, not this year, but last year. And that was horrible. <laughs> and I Horrible for you? Well, yeah, I got up with you and I, I made you I had to food. get out of here by 5.15 to be at their place by 5.45 to 5.50. And, and it then, was freezing cold, and if the, if the sun wasn't out and everything, I had to make sure I conserved energy. And No, I, I just, we really like being with each other, so. I mean, what's, what's the point? The point of having a job is, is what? To make your money, to, to live. To, to live, right? Right, right. To pay your bills, to buy more, because we're in a consumer um all right, you, you got to, okay, so. We're a consumer nation. I wanted to have, I wanted to have a, basically a 6,000 square foot house. I was into the network marketing and all that kind of stuff. And 
And did really well. Did really well. It was in, you know, in the top 1% income earner uh, in, in network marketing in general. <coughs> okay. And uh, basically almost had a six-figure. We were right at a six-figure income, and it was actually increasing. But long story short, that business went by the wayside. We have a lawsuit with that company right now. We've still been working on it for about five years. But, I mean, if that money comes in, great. That would be awesome. But uh, the whole purpose of, you know... Um, well, you you were a consumer. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, if there was a new, anything by Apple. No, oh, I wanted the newest Apple computers. I wanted the Apple Watch. I wanted all this other stuff. And then the more that I saw... In fact, you did stand in line for the Apple phone. Oh, I was I was in line for... I was, yeah, I was in line for hours for the so first phone. So you really were one of those people who... I was, I was, was the, a consumer. I was the consumer. And you wanted the nice luxury cars. Yep. And you wanted the lifestyle. I wanted the luxury cars, but I didn't want the payment. So, oh, look, there's another chemtrail plane going right there. Gosh. So, uh, yeah, I wanted the um, I wanted the cars and all that stuff, but I didn't want the payment. So what I did is I just bought I bought luxury cars, BMWs, Mercedes, and things like that, about t uh, eight yeah, to ten you, years old. Yeah, you did all that, but still, you were a consumer, and you want if you had the money coming in, you would have, and you did have a car payment. We did have a car payment. Yeah, there. well, after they finally convinced me that I needed to get a nice-looking, newer car so I could convince other people that my I was making money from this other business, which is the most stupid thing. Uh, you know, if you got this car you gotta sell allowance and all this crap, you have to sell the lifestyle. Here's the thing. Um, pardon my French. I don't really give a shit about lifestyle. Um, I am c more concerned about time freedom. Now you, now you are. Now I am, yeah, because, I mean, what's you? The when lifestyle the whole, thing is to have the time the and the money. When the rug was pulled out from underneath you in yeah. October of twelve, we were devastated. We had no money to make it. We had no savings. We had nothing. Yep, and I just bought that doggone. I had a seven seven fifty Li, wonderful, beautiful, nice, powerful car. I loved it. Five hundred dollars a month, beautiful. Five hundred fifty no. a month, beautiful. No. No. And that was that was still used, but um, it was within the whatever it was. It was the just guidelines. it was just a nice car within the guidelines. But the bottom line was, you know, I was working to pay all my bills, and at the end of all of that, you know, we spent just about it, basically everything that we made, and uh, you know had a nice life just never put away for the future um and uh you know we thought about maybe in the future too what's going to happen is but um, see I, I was never a material girl and i never craved to have all the extra and i was never the one who wanted the luxury car and had a hard time in the business trying to sell a lifestyle i didn't believe in so, even though it was devastating for him, it was pretty good for me. I had to um, support him, and we went through really, really, really hard times for two years. But oh, I um, lost the car. I had to turn the car back in. Gave it back to the bank. You know, um, just just a number of things. It's just uh, no food. It's horrible. You know, I had to get on food stamps. You know, did that for a while until we could get back on our feet and get her upholstery, upholstery business, business and stuff going. going. And uh, so that, you know, that just, that got us enough to kind of get by. I mean, we scraped by for a couple of years before we started having a little bit extra to do some of the things we wanted. But then... Got full custody of both of your boys and they lived with us during this time. So there was four yep. mouths to feed, not just two. Four mouths to feed while we're food stamps with sometimes maybe your one of your kids coming to live with us or... Um, you know the your other kid and his wife and so it's just been tough but out here's tough but it's a hell of a lot easier than what we were doing in the city i think i don't have to get up every day you know and and you know go somewhere for eight hours a day i mean my closet here although i've never had tons of clothes in my closet in the walk-in master closet i could keep both seasons of clothes in that closet shared with john um, he probably had more clothes than me. I've never been a shoe horse, but my closet now is two foot by two and a half foot deep. And it's only, how tall? It's, it's 
what, maybe five foot tall. Here? Yeah. The trailer? Five foot tall. Yeah. So well, yeah. I can't even like hang a dress in there. So that is all I have plus two drawers. Um, and I make it work. It works for me. So I'm not a big clothes horse. We have... Goals that go, or I've always had goals that go along with this, you know. Um, always studied simple living, um, <clears throat> your money or your life. That was a good one. I've always been a proponent of all of this, so this fits in. And I didn't do very good in the city. I was getting worse and worse with headaches because of the EMFs from all of the phone, the cell towers and everything around us. I would wake up with hideous headaches. Oh gosh, you turn on your computer or laptop or something and there'd be, you know, 15 or 20 Wi-Fi signals overlapping your house from all the neighbors and everybody around you and behind you, beside you. And, you know, it was just nuts. Nuts, and uh, we actually had two Wi-Fi routers in the house, one, one in the front of the house, one in the back of the house, uh, just so we get better signal in the house because, you know, you're dealing with all the interference from the neighbors. Anyway, long story short, I was started to do some studies and, and found that when I had both Wi-Fi on in the house, uh, within um, a day or so, Kelly would start to have uh, debilitating headaches to the point where, you know, you couldn't get up and running and get going for, you know, till noon. Past noon. Past Some noon. days I couldn't get going. Yeah. But, and also the water. Tulsa started doing... Oh, they, added, really they added ammonia. They added ammonia to the water, and then now they call that chloramine. And I, you know, started having itchy skin. Really, really... Um, it was just, it was bad. All summer long, they came through and sprayed for mosquitoes. Never told you when they were going to come. Just came and sprayed pesticides. The Up neighbor on one side of us had a pool. They never used it, but their pumps ran all the time. The neighbor on the other side has a pool, used he it used every it, day. Yeah. Their pump ran all the time. Uh, the one across the street, like a couple no over, had a pool. You could hear. So there's a constant din of just noise all around you. And if you got up at 5, 5 o'clock-ish, 4.35, you walk outside and you think it'd be quiet, but you just you start to hear the all the, the cars starting to move around and the noise increase. It's just a noise. Out here. Barking dogs every now and then. Coyotes go crazy two or three times a week. Uh, uh, we call them hoo house. We have two owls owl. we saw on the property today. And they makes really cool. Two hoo house. They're awesome. And, uh, you know, not, not much else. The road grader comes up and down the road every now and then. There's a little bit more construction, people moving out in this area, so... There's a few more trucks and stuff, but you hear gunshots because a lot of people out here have have guns and they're target practicing or shooting sh an armadillo, shooting an armadillo or, a possum, or a possum or coming towards their animals. Oh well, we do have noise. We have geese, we have turkeys, we have a guinea, we have farm noises <laughs> and dogs, but that's okay. That's okay because. It's more in line with how I've always wanted to live, and it just feels awesome. And John has adjusted beautifully, and he was always meant to be Farmer Brown. I always knew how to fix stuff in town. Just never really had an opportunity to need it all the time. And I, you know, I say it was really cool to be able to know all that stuff, and then I, I come out here, and before you can start any kind of project, there's always something you have to do to get something started or running or something so there's always a project before the project before the project and uh, as ed says you know there's there's it's always something that has to be done before you can on the homestead on the always homestead before something. you can do the next thing and that's okay and our spring our spring is running again. yeah so we haven't had to go get water um which is a little bit of a relief we'll have a break so we'll be putting money back to drill a well we're going to do that with our neighbors, and we're going to have a shared well. But um, it is nice to have the spring back up and running. And hopefully this drought thing won't hit us again this year. I hope not. We but shall see, but you know what? A well will cost about $4,000 a piece. 
Yeah, about eight grand around here yeah. for this depth that we need. Yeah, so, um, and the freaky thing is our neighbors have um, some property in town. It is on a well though, and the well that they had was 260 feet deep. It went dry. They had to go down another 260 feet, which is kind of freaky to me. That out here on this aquifer, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's just. Was this the Ozark aquifer? Mm hmm. Yeah, we're on the Ozark aquifer, if I remember right. Yeah, so, um, you know, and we've had, and maybe that's one of the reasons our spring went dry because we've had three people put in wells around us. One to the east, one to the south, one to the west, and they're all within a half a mile from us. So maybe that's another reason our spring decided to give up the go July, August, September, October, November, December, and just started back up in January. So four eggs, our spring's going again, our build is going, we're going to have additional room. We're going to, well, 14 by 30, so that's 420 square feet, and we're already in about 300 square feet. So that alone will be incredible. And I'm so looking forward to my very own bathtub. <laughs> it's the simple things in life, a bathtub. Yep. A bathtub and... I'm going to go ahead and put in a regular toilet, uh, a low flush toilet, but a regular toilet hooked up and we are going to put in a better septic system this time. And I know I could go compost, but this is going to be a guest house. Get back house, here. A guest. Come here, Gussie. And I do want my guests to want to come and visit us and feel comfortable. Haven't quite decided what we'll put in our house house for ourselves, but you know, to be able to flush the toilet with my hand instead of my foot, that'll be a difference, too. <laughs> yep. And not having to go out there every week when the toilet starts gurgling or you flush it and it bloops up and you get, <laughs> you get poo or pee on your foot. Yeah, yeah. It'll, and, it'll be... and I have to go out there and pull the plug. and. Well, that'll still be going on the other side where Mom is. Yeah. So, but hopefully a little bit less. Anyway... It's the simple things. Here's another simple thing. Mariah, Mariah, the Blue Merle Aussie, is pregnant by Gus, the Black Tri. So we'll be having puppies, um, I believe, somewhere around the 1st of March. So they'll be ready to go to homes of their very own somewhere around the 1st of May or the middle of May, depending on what how old we think they need to be before they go to their new homes. But um, Mariah's going to give me my new puppy, and her name is Grace. I've already decided on that one. Well, we have Khaleesi and Drogo <laughs> from Game of Thrones, because uh -huh. Khaleesi was pretty much all white, and Drogo's pretty much almost black all and black and white. And then uh, we got Earl and Retta. From Saving Grace. From Saving Grace, which is and the, Gus. And Gus. From Saving Grace. From Saving and Grace. That's why the new puppy's name will be Grace. Mm hmm. But another Kim Trail. Yeah. Looks like the same plane. No, nope, that's a different plane. Mm You just got to be willing to have patience and it's always something on the homestead. Nothing ever goes as planned. Things are farther apart. It takes longer Stop. to go get things. But for us, it's all worth it. Get back here, everybody. No, you guys stay. Okay, well, let's go take a look. All right, all right. Uh -oh. All right. All right. Dogs are going crazy. Time to go inside. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thought we'd let you hang out with us for a little bit, not working on a project. Talk to you later.